This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to Global Connections. I'm your host, Carlos Suarez, and I'm joined today by two young leaders that uh, are here with me at the University of the America Puebla in Puebla, Mexico. Uh, we are in Cholula, Puebla, I should clarify. Uh, and joining me today are two young leaders who've been involved with a very important conference that's held here every year, a student conference known as the Latin American Model United Nations. We're going to talk about what is involved in organizing such an important event, what kind of, you know, activities they do, what lessons the students get from this or are skills. Uh, with joining me today, I'm very happy to welcome, on one hand, I have Maria Jose Goitia right here in the middle. Welcome, Maria Jose. Well, thanks, Dr. Tom, so much for having us today with you to talk about such a project we love so much and we yeah. put so much effort into. Great, thank you. And also joining me is Enya. Enya Nava, another student here. Uh, thank you for joining us, Enya, and welcome to Global Connections. Thank you, Nava. Uh, I love that you have a lot of people important um it's kind of break, uh, break because mm -hmm. they're mainly because of the students and because of the interns to be a better work. Sure. And you know here at the university of course we you know we learn different ways. We have classes where we study things, we research, we write, we have lectures, but this type of experience is what we might call a more practical experiential learning that is outside of the classroom, but very important because you're learning lessons about many of the issues you study in classroom, but more real world, more practical. Uh, and we'll talk more about particularly the Model United Nations. It's a program that's been around for some time, of course, and it helps students to develop very important skills. But before we jump into that, maybe just a brief word, Maria Jose and Anya, tell us, you're both students here in Puebla, Mexico. Uh, but where are you from? Are you from this uh, area yourself? Yes, I'm, I'm born and raised here in Puebla, Mexico, what? ever since. And I've been a student here at University of Latin America at Puebla since 2014. Yes, I'm doing a double major in political science and international relations, mm -hmm. hopefully graduating next year. <laughs> and, well, it's yeah. been such a ride. This university has helped me to do internships abroad, mm -hmm. an exchange program in really good universities. I'm so mm -hmm. grateful for Great. having the chance to study here. And definitely one of my greatest passions and biggest mm -hmm. projects throughout my entire undergrad has been to model UN. And you mentioned, uh, did you have any chance to study abroad yourself outside? Of yes, I was a student for a summer at Team Full Paris at I also went to McGill University doing a semester in Montreal, Montreal, and then I left to the University of Edinburgh to finish my year of law. Scotland, okay. Scotland, yeah. UK. Well, very good. And tell us, Anya, are you from Puebla yourself? Where is your home? Uh, my home is in Tlaxcala. Tlaxcala, which is a, a small state, yeah. very close by. <laughs> small state, yes. I'm from Puebla. Yes. And we laugh because many. The people from here, from Ola, they say that let's go to the country because it's really near and they don't like identify with the sound with Yeah. So it's just a part of it. That's right. It's kind of surrounded by the state of Puebla, but it is one of the smaller states. Maybe exactly. for, for some of our listeners who might maybe know the geography of the United States, it's kind of like the Rhode Island, a little small state surrounded by bigger <laughs> ones, but it has its own charm and a long history of actually holding off. Indeed, it exists because of the Perhaps uh, you know the ancient warriors that kept it from being <laughs> conquered by other uh, other groups. Uh, well, thank you both for joining us. And again, you're also a student of international relations. Yeah, yeah. And of course, I mean something like the Model UN, the United Nations. Basically, it's a it's a, a an experience that uh, is done throughout many high schools, many universities. Uh, and often, it's done at a local level or a regional level. Sometimes they are international. They take, take on many dimensions. And I want to talk to us about uh, this uh, experience. Both of you have been involved as leaders in this Latin American Model UN, and it's been hosted here in Puebla at the University of the Americas. Uh, this is now, I think we finished just the last one, it was the 31st annual uh, um, edition of the Latin American Model UN. Uh, and so for our listeners, I want to make sure we understand, I mean, what exactly is you know, is it, and, and it's a program that it goes on for several days, basically a part of a week, and it brings together many different students. So tell us a little bit about just the dynamics, what it is, who comes, who participates. Well, I think it's really important to highlight that uh, Ramon is the first model UN that took place in Latin America at mm -hmm. university level. Mm -hmm. So we have that, we're very proud of that. Mm -hmm. We're very proud that we're still around after 31 years. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely a challenge because a lot of things change. It definitely depends on every generation to carry on. Mm -hmm. So it's been around for 31 years. 
it's been growing and it has the goal to be a regional model one mm -hmm. to bring not only universities from here in Puebla and from around Mexico, but also to invite the same universities from mm -hmm. Latin America and try to reach out for the U.S. and Canada. Mm -hmm. So it's been coming. We also try to reach for high schools to get them involved because we know for high school, it's, really, it's a very thrilling experience and activity to yeah. get involved in Young UN. So basically that's like the goal and the history of La Moon, and I think Amy can hey, tell you way more about the function of La Moon, like day to day. Yeah, so what it does, it, it emulates essentially a, a series of negotiations and discussions and, and, and basically the agenda of the United Nations and the real world problems and issues, many very complex, many, you know, many different pieces of the UN. And, and we have to understand the United Nations is a very large, complex organization. The General Assembly is a big one, the Security Council focused on peace and conflict, but many others that may be dealing with social, humanitarian, economic development. Uh, tell us anything else you want to add about, in general, what it is, I mean, and who are the participants? Students have come, they come from all over Mexico and some other areas in the region, but they're a mixture of university students and some high school, so you have a mixture of different types. And, and anything else you can add? Um, like, my experience told that it's kind of us being going and mm -hmm. it's evolving to be like the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hegemon. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. But in ways that we, we, we will try to be like among my team, mm -hmm. try to be a really good debate. Mm -hmm. There are three days that we debate. Mm -hmm. And also, you have like the agenda, what they're going to debate, what are the topics that they're going to debate, your representative country. Mm -hmm. And also, the all the motions that we got us together, the year we were going to send them to the Secretary of the United Nations. Mm -hmm. In that way, we think that we we're going to impact a little, maybe not, not yeah. that big, but we have. So, it has a very important, maybe, youth perspective of, mm -hmm. of young leaders, yeah. of young students. And so, as you said, you come together for this uh, several days, three intensive days, but of course, a lot of work is done before. So, the students who come, they represent a particular country. They have to research, understand the issues, the interests of that country, what role it might play, uh, and then they're participating in a particular piece of the United Nations, whatever committee or organization, and they need to understand uh, a lot of rules, procedures, protocol, uh, et cetera. We'll talk a lot more about that, and of course, uh, one of the biggest challenges, you as young leaders that are involved in organizing this type of thing, uh, there's a big challenge because one of the very important things about this, it is put on by students. Students are the ones who basically help organize it and put it all together, and, and that's not easy. There are many challenges. You have to learn a lot by doing it, um, but at the same time, you learn by sharing that experience. And Maria Jose, you most recently were the what, Secretary I General? I Secretary General for, for this. For this first one. And, you're, you're, the future of and you have a, a, a successor in training, and, and of course, that's the real world. You have to have people who bring experience and, and maybe you learn through the system, and so that uh, the next year, uh, as it will come again, uh, uh, Enya will be sort of the, the top dog, the Secretary General, uh, but helping to bring together many others because, like all, all of these type of things, it's a complex, uh, or, um, let's say, uh, event. It requires a lot of participation, a lot of different people. Uh, if I can turn to, to one of our first pictures, we have a, a photograph here of the very first photo that shows us an example of the opening ceremony uh, a panel uh, where you know you'll have some of the distinguished uh, either academic uh, leaders uh, dean and, and and other academic officials kind of welcoming them and receiving them we have a uh, in the first picture again a, a, a panel group that these are the, the main core people beginning and, and organizing it uh, if we can turn to the second picture we have here the organizing committee itself and both of you are in this picture together with a few other of your peers, uh, you uh, form uh, this picture, basically the, the, the top organizing committee? Yes. That would be what we call the high commit. High commit, okay. Like it's like the usual word that they use in the United States to describe the organizing committee. Mm -hmm. So basically, the high command hearing was created by the Secretary General. The Under Secretary General, who was in here this year, mm -hmm. we have an academic director who is in charge of building all the committees, preparing all the chairs who are going to be moderating the debate, creating the research. Mm -hmm. We also have a director of logistics who is in charge of all the small details mm -hmm. of how long it's going to work, the agenda, sponsorship, mm -hmm. like all the functioning details. Mm -hmm. And this year, we like from previous years, we realized that if we wanted to make, like improve the quality mm -hmm. of the event, 
we need to reach out to other areas. We have a director of finances who is in charge to help them out with all the money because we are from international relations and sometimes mm -hmm. finance is not your finance is not our, like yeah. our expertise. We mm -hmm. definitely know the basics of money, but it's great to have someone sure. who is the best at it. And we have a, a special director for media and mm -hmm. design. Okay. It's in charge of all the communications with social media, design, all the image. It's in charge of him and his department. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm missing our head of delegation. We prepare people here at university mm -hmm. to be part of the delegation. If they don't want to become part of the staff or of the chairs, they can just be delegates can debate, so we also encourage them to do that, and it's basically what the high command is okay. part of. Yeah. And I mean, it's a very uh, important uh, sort of overall, you could say, executive committee that comes together, because as you know, there are many different pieces, and as we continue our dialogue, I mean, uh, understanding some of the challenges of logistics and planning are one thing, but on the other hand, the agenda and the items that are discussed and, and, and the topics are both current and contemporary issues. But they're extremely complicated, and, and the reality for the UN is that you need, obviously, diplomats and experts who understand negotiation and understand maybe how to solve complex problems, but you also need very technical expertise if you're dealing with, you know, everything from whether it's military or even maybe agricultural development or you know, just thinking of the many different things. You really need a wide range of experts. You need finance people. You need engineers, and, and in many ways, it's a very good experience for the students because at the end, you may be students of international relations, but you also have students who may be in business, who may be in psychology, or maybe they're in uh, uh, in, in nursing and they understand health issues. That's the real world, and, and the United Nations must deal with all of these many topics. Our high command actually is formed through different undergrads. Mm -hmm. Like some of us as in international relations, we have from nanotechnology, from communications, from finance, mm -hmm. from engineering. It's it's amazing yeah. because it's truly a multidimensional high command. Yeah. That that was one of the things I found was very important. Like and, and that the team really worked things that we had like people in yeah. their expertise and working together and also the chairs. They belong to different parts of the university. They come from different undergrads, different bachelors. So mm -hmm. it's not genuinely for only international relations, political mm -hmm. science people. It, yeah. it actually can broaden to be a full university. Yeah. And this is why, again, it's a very important and, and, and even popular because it reaches out to everybody. And that's, again, the real world, the United Nations. You have not only the traditional diplomats that are in this world of diplomacy, but you have public health officials, doctors, uh, engineers, uh, bankers, because if you're dealing with you know challenges of underdevelopment and, and economic crises and so on. You need people who understand the money, the financing and so on, uh, and, and public health issues and, and, you know, issues, even the issues of conflict and war, they involve very technical questions of uh, mobilizing, you know, weapon systems or whatever it might be. But again, I think uh, it's a good example where it's not reserved just for the students of international relations and sort of, you know, diplomacy and so on, but you need all of that. And thank you for sharing that. Um, I think as we get ahead, we're going to be looking to uh, take a short break in a, in a moment here. Uh, basically, we've got a basic setup. We have this Latin American model, UN, and this is now the 31st year that just finished, so it's now institutionalized. It has like a system, a process, and part of what you do is to, you've had your experience, but you have lessons you learn and challenges, and you try to convey them to your successors. Uh, we'll take a short break right now, and when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about those logistics and some of the specific challenges, but also, very important, what are the takeaways, what lessons, what skills, what uh, sort of, you know, values the students learn when they participate in this. It's such an important opportunity. So we'll come back on just a minute. Uh, I'm your host here, Carlos Juarez, uh, Global Connections, joined today by two young leaders, uh, Enya and Maria Jose, who have been involved in the Latin American Model United Nations Conference. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment. Come back and join us. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. We have this crazy thing going on today. I was just walking by, and all these DJs and producers are set up all around the city. I just walked by, and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. It's the way you walk. It's the way you talk. They had no musical talent and then sat down and kind of played some really nice sound.
play, so any chance to play at all. You know, that's my life. I love music. Yeah. Also. The publicity, communication, mm -hmm. yeah, getting the support, of course, are very critical. Mm -hmm. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Are we, yeah. we're good to go? Aloha and welcome back. I'm your host, Carlos Juarez here on Global Connection. And uh, we're having a great conversation today with two young student leaders here at the University of the Americas in Cholula, Puebla in Mexico. Uh, and they have been uh, basically involved in helping to organize and put on a very important annual student conference, uh, the Latin American Model United Nations. Uh, this past year, they celebrated the 31st year that uh, it's been hosted here at the university, and it brings students from many parts of, particularly Mexico and some other regions, uh, and students from different schools, different uh, even levels, including high school and, and university students. And this is not an easy challenge uh, to put on something like this. Uh, of course, even the university, which of course supports it, but it's often when it comes down to actually doing it, it can be really tough. So I wonder if you might just share some anecdotes, some of the issues that what is involved in planning it and, and what are the kind of challenges that you have to overcome just to bring it all together and make it happen because it happens over three or four days but to get there and to arrive at that it's obviously a lot of back preparation so maybe share with us a little bit of that so talking about like the bureaucracy that university has is a lot quite difficult mm -hmm. because when you need that the department or maybe another kind of professor or kind of that supports you, mm -hmm. you are going to find that you need to, two months later, you have to put like this paper and then another, and then mm -hmm. they can tell you that you can't use like that, the, some budget because you don't have like kind of numbers, mm -hmm. so of the students, and maybe that was like a big deal with us that the students that arrive, they don't inscribe, uh, in the Moline United Nations like quickly. So at last month we have like a number and number and number and number, number. So it's a very dynamic like you, you don't even know who's arriving at the very last uh -huh. minute. You have a lot of change of plans, of course. So again, this is yeah. a headache I think for any kind of big complex organization. And like you said, I mean you're part of an institution here which is its exactly. own bureaucracy and rules and procedures and uh, you end up having to find yourself very frustrated. But tell us again, uh, just challenging, uh, uh, Maria. I said, think that what? the greatest challenge here when I took charge of the model United was with few times previous. So mm -hmm. I decided to take the challenge. I just turned around and got any idea <laughs> what convinced to do this together. And I'm really thankful for that. My biggest lesson of the challenges here is definitely the way our university works because we are students. We are really into the academic branch. We, we really don't know the administrative part, but it's yeah. crucial to get things done for a conference. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's an event from the university. We're representing the university. I don't need to follow those rules, but we are yeah. like in blank. And you're very so learning as you go. Learning as you go. I wish somebody told you this before. Under time so pressure, yes. which it's challenging. And I think in every conference you prepare money is always a, yeah. a thing yeah. i think that budget is always tricky and getting sponsorship so i think that the biggest challenge is just trying to learn how to figure it out yeah. and to improve the budget and to become more creative and innovative in how we're going to do to keep this sustainable in way of numbers yeah because it's terrible to talk about numbers but at the end of the day and it then requires funding. And if we don't talk about the money, that I think was an issue in previous years that it was trying to like to be avoided mm -hmm. because to be politically sure. correct, sure. where this year was our biggest challenge. And I think that it's really divided the support here. The department professors like you and our dean of social science was extremely supportive, mm -hmm. full of trust, and always fighting with us to get things done and to get the best experience for our guests. But definitely we need to take like a stand to 
like define what we want Mambu to be for university to actually make it visible how an enriching experience it can be so we can overcome all the challenges that we found during the 31st edition. And I think, you know, again, this is so true of many things. I mean, even the United Nations has to struggle with the reality of budgets, but maybe the key point here is that you have to continuously have to explain and argue and articulate, you know, what is the purpose of this and what, you know, it, 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 it's not just for this narrow interest of students, but in fact, the university as a whole. That's the, the impact we can yeah. have. We definitely found out that Lamon is a great event to portray what we want to be as a university, what you can do, and to actually invite all students who are part of the community to be part of the event because you can find what to collaborate with, mm -hmm. and I think that many people think it's just for international relations. So mm -hmm. that's one of the challenges sure. we want to like to take advantage of to mm -hmm. create into a bigger, a better opportunity, and hopefully improve the lessons we learned from this year. Yeah, and so again, speaking as you are now, the lessons and the challenges as an organizer. Now let's think of it now. Finally, uh, with some thoughts about from the perspective of those who come and participate and who get involved. I mean, this type of experience that I, I mentioned earlier is called experiential learning, where you're learning really practical, hands-on, simulation, role play, um, and uh, you're developing very important skills that I can tell you certainly as an educator and, you know, I've been involved with many model UN over the years, uh, students then develop skills that they're going to be able to use in their real life and, and uh, understanding complex issues, whether they're global or just even the dynamics of coming together as a group. Uh, maybe if you can speak a little bit about what are some of the skills or values or lessons that the participants learn? What do they take away? You know, why participate in the Model UN? Uh, what do you get from it? And, and again, maybe if you can share anything about that, and, and, and yeah. uh, One skill I think that is very important, maybe when you represent something, maybe the things that you represent are not according with things that you think mm -hmm. or that you believe. And that's one of the things that has in your class. <laughs> we have a class now a debate. And when you are defending something that you are not occurring with, then it's like an issue, but in real life, in politics and in diplomacy, you are going to do that. Yeah. So I think that's a, that that skill like needs to be yeah. released not only in in people that are going through diplomacy or politics, but also like in medicine. I have one called medicine that thank me because within the Molly my nation, she tried to empathize with people mm -hmm. and and it's, it's good that not only these Molly my nations are for diplomacy or for no. class. I mean, and, and I think maybe it's just along the line, you have to learn to be able to work with people with, that have different skills and different knowledge. So if you're dealing, again, maybe it's a uh, putting out a pandemic disease crisis in West Africa. Well, you need a public health expert. What does it involve? The doctors, they need to know what, what, what is uh, going to help us to solve and, and maybe manage this conflict and the logistical support of, you know, getting the people there, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So the point is that you also are forced to deal with many different types of experts. And even in your case, students that are studying something else, that you might not have them in your classroom, but guess what? Now you have to come together as a team uh, to address this complex issue. Uh, and uh, so that's, again, an invaluable skill, uh, and it's a good example of what this Latin American Model UN, like, like Model UN everywhere, help us to develop those kind of, you know, practical skills, team-building skills, negotiation skills. Uh, anything you can add? Yes. Uh, during the inauguration, I talked about why Model UN are important, mm -hmm. why the moon is important, not only for us, but for students. Mm -hmm. And for me, the biggest emphasis was not only the academic skills to get of research, of negotiation, mm -hmm. of speaking out loud. It was about empathy. Mm -hmm. Model United Nations definitely teach you to learn about a different reality than the one you have. Yeah, yeah. And to learn to represent it, to live it, and to open your eyes to the different realities you yeah. believe. And I think that's not only a valuable lesson or a valuable skill you should develop for your life as a student, but your uh, life for the future. Yeah. And from the point of view of organizing, definitely I think the biggest lesson learned is teamwork, mm -hmm. it's patience, and it's just learning how to work under pressure. Yeah. Model United Nations can teach you so much. That's why I say yeah. not only skills that will definitely make you more competitive when you go out to work 
whatever you're going to work, enterprises, politics, mm -hmm. private sector, sure. anything you want to do, definitely there are skills that will help you be more competitive, mm -hmm. but also help you to be a better human being. They yeah. teach you a lot of value. So sure. for me, it's like a very complete activity to do. Even if you're just going to try it once, you're mm -hmm. definitely going to get a lot of learning. And you're going to meet a lot of people who might become really close friends. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a great way to connect. To network and to get to know people from different places. Yeah, no, you've said it very well, and again, uh, so indispensable. And it's just a learning that has to come outside of a traditional classroom. This is a real practical, hands-on, role-play simulation. Uh, as we finish now, let me just show a couple of quick uh, final slides. We have a, a picture number three that just gives an example of an auditorium. Uh, where you know part of the process is, is the students come from many different places, but they also have opportunities to hear some lectures, some discussions, some workshops, uh, and that happens to be a, a presentation I gave. If we turn now to number four, uh, a lot of what goes on is the typical sort of student discussion. You have small groups, there's negotiation, you're trying to you know, fine-tune some kind of a proposal, reach a resolution on something, and bring together a consensus, a, a, an agreement on something. You have a complex issue, a problem, how can we solve it, what can we do? And that's the thing uh, that happens in a lot of these. So look at the final picture we have, number five, uh, just a, an example again here, the final group picture at the end of the many different participants who came together for this particular uh, Latin American Model UN. Uh, and again, it's just a very exciting opportunity. Uh, the students take it very seriously. You learn the importance of protocol, of procedures, of rules, because certainly the UN has a lot of them. Uh, but also it's just the nature of, of dealing with you know, cross-cultural relations, understanding, empathy, the most important lesson that you really get out of your comfort zone and you put yourself in the shoes of others and you understand the issue from their point of view. So thank you for sharing all that. Uh, as we finish now, I, I guess uh, we just have some final closing thoughts. I mean, anything else you want to share with us, Anya, from your vantage point? You're, you've been through it now, and you're going to be embarking on helping plan the next one. Uh, you have the fortune of, of having experienced that. But uh, any final takeaways or thoughts? It's a challenge. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a really good challenge, but it's you like my Jose told us, and I think the next year is going to be better than oh. what we have. <laughs> no, because, I hope, I hope. <laughs> because we have my Jose, and yeah. we have like all these teaching about this year, and mm -hmm. now we know what's going to be. Sure. When's when to work, when's not. Yeah, what to anticipate. And anything. Well, like for us, the 31st year represented a challenge, and what we came as a team and what was like my biggest goal this year was and bring the vantage point of what we want to do with them, what we want it to become, yeah. because we have all this history. But we need to we need to move on. We need to to be more attractive to to still alive. So I think that as I said, I definitely trust that next year is going to be better. We want to make Lamoon an an integral experience. It's not only about being a really rigorous academic activity, but that you can also learn from the conferences and that you can also have fun and enjoy meeting people from around the world, mm -hmm. around different parts. So I think that this year was a vantage point, and I am sure that it's going to be in good hands. I hope I'm have help mm -hmm. making it easier, and it's going to be this. This year was the renewal, like figuring out what we're going to do, and next year it's going to be a great comeback. So I, I trust it's in the greatest of hands. She was... <laughs> An amazing partner to her own this ride, and she's so qualified for it. Excellent. So. Well, again, both of you are good examples of young, <laughs> young student leaders who obviously have taken this initiative, and and, and uh, you will certainly have lifelong. Uh, benefits and skills uh, from this and, and lifelong friends that you've met along the way uh, that you may not have had in the classroom, but suddenly this experience kind of brings you together. Well, on this, I want to just thank our viewers for tuning in on us here. A uh, good example, again, of the sort of dynamic learning process that, uh, that we see happening in today's world, young leaders who are involved in this Latin American model UN and developing skills that they will carry with them in whatever next step they have. Uh, thank you for joining us here on Global Connections. I'm your host, Carlos Suarez, joined today by Enya Nava and Maria Jose Goitia, both students here at the University of the Americas in Cholula, Puebla. We will close on that and wish you well. Join us again for our next episode on Global Connections. Aloha.